Hey, adventurer. Welcome to my bar. I stab him in the throat. He <laughs> he immediately falls to the ground, spewing blood from his throat, and uh, the entire uh, tavern is gasped. I turn and swing at the first person that looks at me. <laughs> and, 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 Insane bar fight ensues. <laughs> so we are talking about murder hobos today. Uh, first of all, let's define what we think murder hobos are, Riley, and then um, let's just get into a couple solutions how how we personally would would handle murder hobos. But so, start us off for what's your definition of murder hobo? I think it's the people or the players that kill. NPCs and people that really, you know, like like we can run through the scenario before, really they first of all weren't a threat. NPCs that like innkeepers or shopkeepers that really had no business in a fight. It's not like they showed up to the big bad evil guy's house and he wanted to chat with them and they stabbed him in the throat. And they probably were gonna fight him anyways. That's okay. But when they show up to a tavern like that and just decide to kill everyone because it's XP and they get extra money. That's that's a murder hobo killing unnecessarily. Yeah, it's one of those players. I feel like that you know, it's ending in combat no matter what it is. Uh, yeah, and it might even be starting with combat to be honest, right? And that's so, fair. um, yeah, people who are out there to spill some blood, right? That's 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 your typical murder hobo, I guess, in in our point of view. So, all right, so how are we dealing with this then? Yeah. Let's say you've got a player or maybe even a party full of these murder hobos. What what are you doing to prevent yeah. or at least like change this dynamic? They they usually come in packs. Um mm -hmm. but so I've I've heard a couple and and one that I've heard most often from other DMs are uh, online and in person has been that you know you just TPK you killed the whole party. Uh, I have an issue with that because it ends up being that they just start over and it, the cycle continues. It's kind of a short, quick end to a, a long-lasting problem, and so it's not really the answer. I've done in the past where um, if the opportunity arises, it was not planned, but if the opportunity arises to where I could coup de gras or kill one of the players outright um, because they made a tactical mistake or something, I do for the purpose of just showing that there are consequences to actions, you know, the NPC has to have the right motives, but rather than killing the whole party, send the message just with one. It allows the rest to kind of step back and think, and then uh, maybe that character needed, you know, wanted his story arc to end anyways. Right. But, okay, so you're talking like sending a message in a sense. Uh, yeah, send a message in some way, but not just outright killing everyone. Sure. Just cause. Just a Don't full TPK, extreme. wipe everybody out, start over. Right. <laughs> push reset on the on the game console, right? Yeah. Um yeah, that's interesting. I I I agree with you too. I think it kinda obviously I say this like every single time we have a discussion, but it obviously depends on your character or sorry, your player, your player base. I think that like um it in some cases, it might work to do like a short-term solution, like you said, and just immediately um, send a message, just like, "Hey, killing people ruthlessly has consequences, and those consequences come quickly, right? You don't just get to run around willy-nilly." Um, I've also seen the the other side of that, and sometimes when if it's like if it's like a deep enough rooted problem where like the player sees your message but he sees it more of a ch as a challenge than he does like uh as a you know let's say i'm not backing off like oh you're gonna just you're gonna kill my character then i'm coming back with a new one and you know like right. is there to challenge you then i think you probably have to go more of like the long route where you start setting things up like slowly getting like you know these people are building up a bounty on them and they've got towns and stuff that they're no longer welcome in and people refuse to serve them and um you know and maybe you got bounty hunters coming after them and they're slowly getting better and better until you know again it's consequences and still sending a message but it's like a hey this is building up like your guys's 
time is running short on this murder hobo stuff. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I like that. It's it almost incorporates it a little bit more into the story. Um, there's also a possibility that you just you probably just need to say bye to that player um, if it That's gets true. too bad, um, or have a sit down outside of the game. But to that point of going on with a story, if you're a good enough DM and will allow your campaign structure to change based on what the players do, you could turn this a little bit and almost that if it's the group of players that they become the big bad evil guys they've wreaked more havoc than the enemies originally started doing <laughs> and they've now essentially turned into the antagonist rather than the protagonist so you could kind of turn it around a little bit and you know now they're like well what we have to no one will serve us you know we can't find a place to sleep we don't have a, a hideout or you know and and so it kind of it allows the game to continue and there's still consequences to actions, but it's not as severe as like, okay, the campaign's over, right. or you know, your characters are dead, start over, or we're just done playing, kind of a thing. That makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm trying to think because I do like that idea that the big bad they become the big bad evil guys. That's great. Um, yeah. Again, I, the only thing I could think of too is like. You know, you, it might not always be best to fight fire with fire, right? Right. You could try to take a different approach uh, and add more of like an emotional appeal to things, right? Like uh, you find evidence of this person and they've got a family or put them in a bad situation where like all of a sudden like kids and stuff are involved. And that brings a very, you know, big moral dilemma of what are we doing guys? You know, uh, again, this depends on your players, depends on who you're dealing with, because some people might be like, ah, it's like a video game. It's like Skyrim, whatever, just murder the whole town and move Ooh. on kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> again, you know, it could be tough, but yeah, if you can't appeal to their logic of like, Hey, killing people has consequences or their morals, then maybe you can go a different route um, and handle them emotionally or with their with their pathos and stuff right so. and i think as well with that you can enter maybe maybe you going back to your fight with fire with fire idea it is sometimes not helpful it just increases their flame and they retaliate in the same way harder um so in turn instead of increasing the amount of difficulty you now um, combat wise you introduce things like puzzles into combat you know they have to solve a puzzle amidst you know the chaos of battle or you know you introduce the conversation during turns you know as part of people's turns you know they're they're having conversations throughout the course of the combat and so you're still getting the social or the exploratory all that stuff in during the combat if that's really all they want to do then that allows them to at least participate in those other pillars of play you know um without having to i guess get rid of what they love 